This is Brad Steiger. When I first heard of the mass suicide of a number of unidentified cultists in San Diego, California on March 26, 1997, I first suspected that it was another tragic manifestation of the Solar Temple, a group that had recently claimed the lives of adherents in Quebec and different cities in Europe. Later, though, when I heard broadcasters quoting such phrases as the evolutionary level above human, as typical expressions of the cult members' philosophy, I immediately recognized concepts from the human individual metamorphosis, him, H-I-M, the cosmology of Marshall, Herf, Applewhite, and Bonnie, Lou, and Nettles. who my colleague Hayden Hughes and I had known in the mid-1970s as Bo and Peep. The deceased cultists found throughout the room of a spacious Rancho Santa Fe mansion were later identified as members of a group known as Heaven's Gate, but there was no question in my mind that Heaven's Gate had evolved from H.I.M. Of course, the references to the Hale Bop Comet as the marker, the sign for which the group had been waiting, were recent additions to their cosmology. But the other catchphrases such as graduation from the human evolutionary level were very familiar. In 1985, we had learned that Bonnie, Peep, and then T, had died of cancer, and that Marshall, Bo, now Doe, had carried on their mission of informing Earth humans that salvation hovered overhead in a spaceship. We were saddened, but not really surprised, that Doe and 38 of his followers had decided to terminate their earthly existence in order to graduate to their father's kingdom and enter the heavenly gates on board a UFO. From our perspective, the mass suicide at Rancho Santa Fe was an event that they had been postponing for over 23 years. It all began for Hayden Hughes on July 13, 1974, when Bo and Peep appeared at the headquarters of his International UFO Bureau in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and informed him and his deputy director, Dan Garcia, that they were aliens who'd come from another evolutionary level. Identifying themselves simply at that time as Bonnie and Herf, they stated that their Earth mission was to alert those humans who wished to undertake a process of transition and undergo a metamorphic change that would take them to the next level of evolution. They were there to, to help them. To the critical eyes of Hughes and Garcia, neither Bonnie nor Herf appeared to be anything other than plainly dressed on prepossessing humans in their forties. When the researchers asked for a demonstration of their alleged alien powers, the two self-proclaimed extraterrestrial emissaries put them off by announcing that they would soon provide all the proof that any skeptic could require after their imminent assassination. They said that their slain corpses would lie in state for three and a half days, then they would rise from the dead in full view of the national media. At that time, Marshall and Bonnie had already assumed a nomadic existence. They declared that they had no need of human games, such as jobs and families. They ate a little fruit, slept occasionally. Although they appeared in the likeness of humans, they were really aliens. They had originated on other planets and had already made their graduation to the next kingdom. They now walked the earth as shepherds seeking lost sheep. And they were possessed of the ability to recognize those human who wished to hear their message. It was in the spring of 1975 that I had received three letters from the human individual metamorphosis group and as I re-examined the material I saw that the two were combining 
ufology with Judeo-Christian religious ideas and were leaning heavily on the words of Jesus. This was certainly a familiar aspect of a great deal of UFO contactee literature, but Bo and Peep had added an assertion which offered a new and rather dramatic wrinkle. They claim to have originated from the same level as Jesus, and they asserted that they were the two witnesses referred to in the book of Revelation, who would be the harbingers of a great harvest time for humankind. When I traveled to Oklahoma City to meet with Hayden and the two alien ambassadors, Bo and Peep, on January 7, 1976, the attitude of the media toward Bo and Peep had become very negative. They were being portrayed as incredibly powerful masters of mind control who could warp thousands of brains with a few magical verbal mechanisms. Orthodox religionists were becoming very upset by what they considered the blasphemous utterances of the two, and the husbands and wives left behind by those who had undergone the UFO pilgrimage were seeking ways of spurring police authorities into pressing criminal charges against Applewhite and Nettles. I found Bo and Pete physically attractive, sincere, two soft-spoken individuals dressed informally in lumberjack shirts and casual slacks. I did not find them to be particularly charismatic or philosophically seductive. But they stated firmly that they found no need to defend themselves against any charges of kidnapping or brainwashing men and women or against anything. They had come to help the human level creatures to become creatures on the next evolutionary level. Bo said, just as a caterpillar has to cease all of its caterpillar activities in order to achieve its chrysalis, so must the same thing happen to a human who wishes to make the transition. The human must say, I'm going to rise above and overcome all of my human desires and activities and emerge an individual that can enter a realm that is altogether physically different from the human. The two stressed to us that Earth was fast approaching that season when humans could enter the process that would enable them to graduate to a higher level. And they continued to insist that they and those qualified to graduate would ascend with their physical bodies. All life forms at all levels, whether it's mineral, plant, whatever, have to have a physical body, they explained. We're not talking about anything etheric. We're talking about actually leaving the Earth's atmosphere. Those who take the trip will no longer be associated with the human kingdom but with the next level of existence, they will have graduated from this planet. Now, in spite of all of their impassioned explanations, it remained difficult for us to perceive how one could take his or her physical body to the kind of heaven that we were accustomed to envisioning. But Bo was emphatic. There are no spirits permitted on our Father's kingdom. If you stay at the human level, whether incarnate or discarnate, you will still have all your ties with this garden earth. Bo and Peep had pretty much promised that they would ascend to the higher level, the next higher level, the Father's Kingdom, sometime probably in the summer of 76, 1976. And when that didn't happen, a lot of the followers became disillusioned, dropped out of the group, and Bo and Peep and this, their most faithful disciples decided to go underground. Although we would from time to time hear from certain spouses and family members that had been left behind, it was obvious that the two were now keeping a very low profile. With the exception of our receiving occasional reports of an encounter with a member of the cult or posters that indicated in frequent lectures and seminars, they virtually dropped out of sight for 17 years. And then came on the scene again with the announcement of the tragic mass suicide at Rancho Santa Fe on March 26, 1997. Pete was gone. 
but Bo Doe had at last found the narrow window of opportunity for graduation to the higher level provided by the Space Brothers. Tragically, he'd taken 38 loyal followers with him. And that's why this tape is so valuable, because it will enable you to hear for yourself the kind of philosophy, the thought processes, the sincere manner of speech. And be forewarned, you find yourself liking these people, liking a lot of what they said. We can probably all respect their deep yearning for the kingdom of heaven. But as our friend John White said, it needs to be said clearly that heaven, the kingdom of heaven, is union with God. Hell is separation from God. And the difference between the two is not measured in astrophysical miles, but in degrees of ego transcendence. In reality, we're never separate from God, but we have the free will and the capacity to create the illusion of separation. True enlightenment is waking up to the fact that there is no separation from God, and there never has been. We shall remain anonymous at this time for certain reasons, apparently quite valid, so uh, the date is July 13th. 74, 45 p.m. Okay, uh, wherever you want to start from. Well, uh, it would be better, since we have uh, talked with you, do you have any questions in your mind? It is better to go on a question and answer basis. Then you set up yeah, this uh, situation. Yeah, this is making a difference. Yeah, it's fine, whatever. I don't really care. I don't want to continue the flow. I just want to, you know, for our own purpose. It's okay. really going to make a difference how we go back. Okay. Well, to be quite to the point, in what position can we be of help? He, no, along the line. Either as news media, governmental, research, you know, what avenue? Huh? Well, it's really, um, it's really hard to specify. We feel like that we will give you um, what our job is, and you do with it what you will. Um, we cannot um, designate certain ways. I don't feel like we can do it. I feel that uh, you could do our mission a tremendous service if you chose to do so by, in whatever means you have available to you, merely relating that there are two individuals who are here to <coughs> uh, uh, what is the cliche, show and tell, or something, uh, how man may make the transition into the next evolutionary level, man who desires to do it, how he may do it, and that we will, uh, under the rules that we have to exist under make that information available however it is sought for purposes of of receiving the information rather than sought for purposes to discredit the source uh, we do not exist on a courtesy basis uh, in other words we're not out to uh, sell you something. If you're, if you're searching for whatever reason, curiosity, um, but if you want the information that we can share with you, then we want to share it. If you, if you want it for, uh, not suggesting that you do, but should anyone want it for uh, ridicule purposes or for 
to destroy credibility or whatever your terms may be, then it's a waste of our time and yours and energy. Yeah, I realize that. So our whole purpose <coughs> is to tell to those who want to hear it how they may uh, go through this metamorphic change and become a member of the next level. This is not done in groups. It would never happen as an organization. It's only an individual who says, I've had it with this level. I, I'm ready for the next. Um, and I will sacrifice everything that it requires to make that transition. For that person, then we have a working ground on which to help him with that information. Also, for the general public, we hope that we can help them understand that any beings that are more advanced than the human level of being are indeed beings of the next evolutionary kingdom whether they took their, their birthday on the planet Earth or on another planet when it was serving as the place where a vehicle could be developed to the point of man and ready for this change. Can I ask you this? When we look upon the subject of UFOs, it is usually divided, and I'm saying we UFOlogists in general, it's usually divided in two areas, physical and spiritual. My question is, is this possible for both? Are they here completely physical, spiritual? Are they masked? It's merely man who uh, has to label them. They are real. They are real. Are you talking about physically real? Yes. Okay. But they are real at a vibratory control rate. Pertaining to each individual. Uh, well, for example, a spaceship uh, can change its, its vibration rate. An individual who is a member of the next kingdom can change his vibration rate. He can appear and disappear in front of your eyes because he has developed to that capacity. Do you understand that? Oh, okay. So we're not talking, the spiritual is usually less real than... Is, is there a common denominator for the design of the craft, the spaceship? I do not know that information as to, I would say that it, uh, it's not that limited. Uh, before I forget, what else do you know about? Too, um, not part of our to programming. Explain the vehicle. Uh, it isn't important. It is to you. But uh, if you really want to know about it, then, then you can just uh, follow us and we'll show you how to get to the next That's right. Where you can learn all you need to know about the spaceship. Uh, well, that, <coughs> yeah, I don't want to play cutesy with you, but uh, one question before I forget it. Okay. You are available to help people that want to go into this next kingdom. Uh, in what sense, let's say people contacted us not knowing where to contact you, how would we contact you? How are you available? How are you available? How do you get in contact with, with you? Thoughts. With thoughts, yes. We can... Uh, <laughs> In other words, uh, at this stage, we have, or I have, no, say, formal address to contact you at. Uh, no, and you will not have an address. That's an impossibility for no, us. We don't. So you exist, as you, as you said earlier, you exist on this planet for a specific purpose. Uh, and you just stated that we will be in contact through thoughts. Uh, we can pick up that you want to be in touch with us. 
uh, this is what I mentioned earlier that we had been visiting a group and uh, then uh, and this is probably one thing that would probably get us killed but I'll say it anyway when they pray when humans pray they contact the source that we are from can you understand that? Okay. All right, so when they pray, praying to the highest that's source. right. If that is, that's true. Okay. Now, if they are praying for truth, then they contact us. And we were called back to them a week later. Um, She's speaking of a group in Dallas that's right. that we visited with. And when we visited with them, they were beautifully open and receptive and hungry for the information that we had. We left them. They immediately, as a human tends to do, tried to let all the areas of doubt come in to discredit us. But they also went and sat and said, let us know the real truth. Let us know the real truth about these certain facts. We were halfway across the nation doing another job and were called back and told we had to go back because they were asking for that information. When we showed up, they didn't want it because we were the bearers of it. And they had spent the week in their own minds discrediting us. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay, like I said, I don't want to play cutesy with you, but uh, don't hesitate. Don't, don't misunderstand the question. We want your total honesty. We well, want. This is uh, a little off <coughs> of the of the direct subject. Uh, <coughs> Bonnie, you made a statement that uh, uh, if we wanted to know the whole truth, then we would contact you, and you know we take it from there. Okay. One question that popped into my mind immediately. I stated earlier, one of our objectives is to educate the general public, you know, as far as you folks become aware, uh, factually as we can. If we were to take this step, do I assume rightly or wrongly that we will no longer be in a position to relate facts as we're trying to do now, because if we take our steps and go into this next kingdom, uh, for all intents and purposes, does that not cease our immediate goal here of trying to get truthful information to the people? But you will have someone else take your place. Someone else will graduate to the level that you are at now. Let me say that had Jesus not gone through his chrysalis, then those who he had been the example for could not have been brought that much closer to the truth. And uh, nor would his uh, disciples have been in a position of then administering the truth that he had administered to them. There is a time when you have to be willing, of course, to relinquish that responsibility to someone else because then you would become a member of the house where your truth is that you would be uh, the truth that you would offer freely to all humans that seek it would be of such greater value and so much more real and so much more fact than what you think as a human is fact and real. Okay, so in other words, the possibility exists that, uh, say, I were, I were to decide to take this step, uh, I could conceivably prearrange with someone to say I will be in contact with you later and let you know this information, so that you can in turn pass it on them, yes. on your level. You can help them, but there will be a limit. <clears throat> to what they can accept. 
just like they're, they're sitting up right now, what do you do except that we can? More or less, uh, this say it's about as open-minded uh, as I can be, you know. And, uh, of course, this is, this is what I was trying to get at. I didn't mean it to be cutesy or smart or anything, well, but it's, it's you, something you that immediately, <laughs> immediately popped into my head, well, if we go into this next kingdom, uh, and then by necessity it ceases our present purpose right now in our own way of trying to get information across to the general public. You see, I think it really should be known that uh, uh, the God that humans pray to uh, exists just like you. He was made, he made you in his likeness. Mm -hmm. And uh, all he's trying to do is tell you to hurry up and get out of this great school. And everybody has glorified it to be a religious concept. And now uh, the force of the earth has covered it so that it is preventing people from making it. But that's all uh, that was understood because, um, uh, uh, let's say our daddy was uh, Abbas, 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 uh, they have allowed you to see it so that you would um, know that they exist and that, uh, and that it's you, real that right. it is not uh, uh, and you the mental capacity of members of the next kingdom uh, is created energy man uses his energy sources uh, to put out to his hands and to make babies and to build buildings and to do all these other things that you as creatures of the next evolutionary level can do with a thought mm -hmm. that you have the capacity to perform with a thought because you don't vibrate on the way that a man spends his energy level a man spins himself in every imaginable fashion so that there's nothing left over to be really creative. As a matter of fact, he spins himself so that he keeps his vibrations supremely human. Uh, let me ask you one quick question. Uh, if we, back on an old track, if we were to have to contact you on a thought basis, then what do you refer to as home? We don't have them. See, all you need to do is just um, think of us. And we can get in contact with you. Okay, now. Um, or, let's put it in the human way, just pray to your father. That you want to. I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whichever like is it. comfortable uh, with you. The, uh, okay, then. Do I assume at this point, are you continually for this, let's call it a time span, in this physical body, and do you discard this physical body uh, at will or when it's necessary or what? We can't get into that information. Well, actually, are you talking about while we're here? Well, I mean... As far as doing this work, we're not talking about, you're, you're talking about uh, the length of time that we are here. Well, I mean, I, I, I until mean. Until our death and resurrection. I mean, for well, whatever, I mean, do you, uh, uh, once you return, do you return, let me put it this way, do you return to what you refer to as home periodically and this, you're in this stage of the game, uh, is this, physical body uh, stagnant here? Is it just for your use? Or let me put uh, one more different way. Uh, since you 
are supposedly using these physical bodies to be able to do your work um, is the real you in a different form. Oh, other than other than this physical, yes. We are made in the likeness of man. We have had our graduation from other planets. Uh, he was from one and I was from another. Uh, it was a creative planet, just like the Earth is right now. This is where you pick up the body. Am I answering your question? Question. Okay. Um, you, you, uh, when, once you graduate, once you have overcome the Earth, you graduate and you take this body with you. Now, we have other bodies. Uh, this isn't the body we graduated into. Or took with us on our graduation. They are like this. <laughs> but you, you must understand that, um, well, it's really hard to put it into That's words. part of what I was trying to explain before we left you for a time. If we were not in, for our job, in human environment and human level vibrations and human bodies, then what we would have to say would have no truth in it. It well, would have yeah, okay, no meaning is, to you. This is something I was trying to get at indirectly. We've always made the statement, and it's a common statement, that uh, life in all probability does exist on other planets but not necessarily as we know it. This is what I was indirectly trying to get at. Uh, the real, the real you, uh, in what shape, either physically or spiritually, is it, uh, is it, okay, let's phrase it, is it life as we know it, per se, or is it life totally existent, uh, differently? Uh, from a physical standpoint. You mean, do we look like we have no ears and skin generally, and light? Yeah, yeah, generally. Uh, in reality. We are made just like man. Okay, then. When you graduate, you take your vehicle with you, it doesn't change. It changes. You are not limited to the earth and what you can do in the earth. Um, well, uh, the breakdown is in how man is capable of seeing that individual. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, uh, man can see only what his capacity is. There's a story about, uh, I don't even remember the story, but there's something I heard somebody say once about a blind man, uh, elephant, and someone described his tail and someone else his ear. and someone else's trunk and each thought that they had experienced the elephant. You see what I'm saying? In other words, you can look at something as you well know, someone else can look at it and you see two different things. Mm -hmm. Sure. <coughs> Same thing with UFOs. Same thing with now, UFOs. The breakdown is in the receiver, the person's capacity to to explain what he has seen and also how perceptive he was in seeing it. Well, this, this is what I was getting at, is when you said uh, that the UFOs and even such people as yourself, uh, your vibratory status can change. Right. That's why I said, uh, depending on each particular individual, they'll see different things. That's right. For, for that same reason. And it'll also depend upon the atmosphere in which they saw it. <coughs> I mean, in a certain atmosphere of a certain amount of water or hydrogen or nitrogen or whatever, there might be a pink glow or a green glow or, a, or something else. Uh, it, there are so many factors that it would be always a mistake to say that an individual looked like such and such. But we, what is us, what is real, is what is inhabiting this body. You understand? What I'm saying? Yeah, I don't realize that. Okay, realize because that. what this is what life is. Life is not the body. Life is what inhabits the body. You know that when you when someone is killed and the invisible or the the 
part that some people would call spirit or soul or whatever you want to call it, the invisible part of that body leaves that body, then that flesh is dead. So it's obvious that the life has, le the living part of that individual has left it. Now what has to happen if when man graduates is that the invisible part and the visible part become a single unit and and he then can work in either he can go either way he wants to mm -hmm. because he has overcome the density of of the physical he doesn't have to drop a body off somewhere and the invisible part of him leave it like a man does who who is killed on the freeway or or dies at at an old at a point of old age but we, the only thing important that we have to do and to say is how graduation may be attained and to demonstrate that when an individual has overcome his physical vibration, his earthly vibration, his humanity, that he then gets his birthday papers into not being destructible. In other words, uh, if, if you were willing to flake off all your humanity and to make this graduation, you would move into an entirely different consciousness. You would change your body over just as the chrysalis in a caterpillar to butterfly. You would, it would chemically and biologically change over, though it would appear the same until the crossover was complete. And then it only changes because you have the control of its changing capacity. It's almost like from that metabolism, a third metabolism is formed. Okay, is it then conceivable? Or you, this change you're talking about is strictly into the next kingdom. Uh, this change cannot be done while you're still living here. It, it has to be, be done. done. It has to be done while you're living here. Yeah, you're living here and you make the changeover. But once you make the changeover, you are in the next kingdom. You cannot make the changeover and remain as... Uh, you don't remain in the midst of humans doing human activities because you had to leave that in order to make the change. And it would be as foreign to your... Uh, you live in such a different environment and controlled environment say that he was once uh, uh, or the life form that came up and developed to him was once in an animal's body he certainly after having become a human is not going to go sit in a den of dogs mm -hmm. it would uh, there's nothing to be accomplished there and it would be nothing but a, a, a put upon to you. It would be uncomfortable. It would be antagonistic to you. you. You have no place there. And a person who is an individual who is a member of the next kingdom has no place in, uh, in the environment of jobs and houses and cities and cars and roads and with you people. You do uh, uh, greater things using that term. Uh, to help others. All right, then how do you, how do you presently exist? Do you exist by having to put up with our, what you call, what you call a mundane ways, or what? Well, we do not live on a schedule. Uh, no, I don't mean on a schedule. You know, as to what you do, when, what, and all that. I mean, how do you then exist? Uh, we we eat food, and we sleep some, and uh, we um, we do not have to uh, play human games, if you mean that. You know, like no, but still, still, basically, you still do you still go to the often referred to hassle of, of uh, having to 
the work for your living and all that, or is it supplied to you on a certain basis, um, or what? There's a, um, we do not work. And As you speak, we I work all the time, but... We do a different kind of work. Like, we're working Yeah, okay, right that's now. just what I'm getting to. You know, if and you we do not are work. taken care of. Um, and whoever goes, uh, decides to leave the human kingdom. And this is something we cannot share with you. Unfortunately, I wish we could. We but would. We would if you came to us and said, now listen, uh, I'm not sure what you're saying is right. But uh, it makes some sense, and I would really like to do whatever it takes to. So let's take a hypothetical question. Once a person comes to you, mm -hmm. hey, man, you got any water? Nice water? Something for what? Coke, anything, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of dry. I'd like some tea. Mm -hmm. Would you like some tea? No, it's like for the water. Continue to talk. Oh, yeah, Warren, ask the question. Yeah, uh, I forgot how I was going to put it. Uh, okay, this is this is a okay. You do not work per se as work as I know it. Like I'm going to have to leave in, in a little while and going into work. You do not work in that sense. Ah, uh, being human, as it were as a human nature is, how then do you get supplied? Of course, as I know everything, it's on a, it's on a working and it's on a monetary level. Okay. How do you get your monetary gains, or do you get any monetary gains at all? You must have some monetary, uh, <coughs> uh, so something monetarily supplied to you because you cannot go uh, to go out and eat without giving somebody the money. You cannot purchase gasoline without paying somebody for it or whatever. Well, let's say we cannot discuss that with you. Um, it is provided. Um, uh, each need, each individual need as the need arises is provided. But this... Do you request it? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it goes back to the teaching. But just with a thought, it's requested. Mm -hmm. And it is provided. And uh, But this is a process that you, that an individual, if he desires to overcome the human kingdom, this is a process that he learns how to move into. Okay, this is the perplexity of it, the perplexing part of it for me. Uh, if you are here, to, to teach us this or to make us aware of this is it all that necessary that we convert to the next kingdom why cannot we realize this valuable information as it were and utilize it here at present why is this not possible well, because you have to make room for others that are coming up uh, you well, can't Mm -hmm. Yeah, what could it do a dog to learn to build coca-cola plants? No, I'm talking about, okay, you're going into something better, let's put it that way. You know, you're going into a better quote-unquote world, okay? Uh, why must it be this cycle as opposed to utilizing certain information and making this present existing life or world better with the knowledge of, of what can be done. This uh, planet only has a certain time limit on it, and uh, it can only last as a creative planet for so long. And every you just can't stay. It's like staying in no, high I don't school. No, I don't mean stay indefinitely. Or even, it's I like mean, making high school college. You can't stay in high school and, and, and stay in it for years and years and then say, I graduated from college. Uh, no, I don't like that, but... Uh, you, know. uh, you have to go through mm -hmm. the human kingdom on yes. your way to the next one. Mm -hmm. But you have to, you will never be free to do the things that are 
available to the next one unless you're willing to leave the human kingdom. It's, it's, uh... Leave every, just sort of denounce everything about it. Yeah. And that includes all the labels that humans put on things and the ways of uh, the world because it's, they, they are man's ways. Okay, let me ask you a question that would inevitably pop up. And it's human nature, I suppose. Uh, you're talking about the possibility of offering uh, a euphoria, what everybody is basically looking for, to, you know, the level, the level type thing, you know. Uh, the one question that would come from best, partly from human nature, partly from straight out curiosity. If an individual makes this changeover, the question that's going to come up from anybody as a rule, What's in it for me? Okay, what happens other than that you, uh, your knowledge, everything, uh, presumably expands to a, a much greater level than I know now. Uh, other than that, what is there to go well, that to? That depends on what your mind is on. If you want uh, uh, a human perennially dies. If your mind, what's in it for you is you would never need to die again. You would overcome decay. You would have the capacity with your mind to create anything you desired. And you would have the capacity to serve as an agent to help humans come up to the level that you have graduated to. So it's, in, in a sense, it's kind of like a... Like a and you're not, you would not be confined to a single planet. Okay, would you, would I get, to say this specifically, would I get, uh, would I get assigned duties, let me put it that way? Yes. Your responsibility would be the children of the earth, the ones that are left here, to help them to not have knowledge. This, okay, this is what I'm getting yes. at. If See. this is a responsibility, and indirectly, or whichever way you want to phrase it, it comes back. Why then is it necessary to have to go into the next kingdom? Why can it not be utilized here presently? Because a human cannot even have the capacity to understand uh, what is good for the humans, it's, uh, or, or what the next step is. A human doesn't even have that capacity. Well, is, is you can't be a dog who, who lives in the gutter and makes out with every bitch that comes along in heat and ever expect to become a human. You just can't do it. Now, if you're a dog that... If you're a dog who has turned his life over as a seeing-eye dog and his only pleasure is gained in serving his master, even to the point of giving his life for his master, then he stands a strong chance of graduating. He doesn't have wings. He hasn't even gone through that process of separating himself from okay, the that, that, that's, that's the point I'm making. At that rate, at that, at that rate, on the evolutionary scale, how long has all of this been in the process? More than your mind could possibly comprehend. Okay, this is, this, is, this is again the point that I'm making. Now, during that time is when some graduates are made from the human level to the next one. When that light begins to recede because its season is over, then it, that knowledge and that information will not be available until that light comes again at its next season. That doesn't mean that lower levels of graduation will not be made, but not graduation levels from the human level to the next level. As director of the International UFO Bureau, I can only recap summing it all up, that the grandeur and splendor of our awesome and mysterious universe has always challenged the minds of mankind. Where did it come from? Why does it exist? And what is the purpose behind it? Is our existence the result of intelligence, or are we mere cosmic orphans adrift 
on the oceans of time and space. Today, as we explore outer space, many of our leading scientists agree that millions of other worlds must exist and that some may sustain civilizations further advanced than our own. Some contend the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, commonly called and known the world over as flying saucers, to be a manifestation of these other civilizations. Others, with equal sincerity, believe that their explanation for their existence lies in the realm of the natural sciences, while others have contended the UFOs are a manifestation of God. On Saturday morning, July 13, 1974, I was involved with answering routine correspondence when I was approached by two individuals. Little did I realize at the time what would result from that meeting. The two were calm, neatly dressed, and both in their forties. What they had to relate during our conversation was most interesting, as they related that they were alien to the earth and offered a solution to the UFO controversy. What was their message for mankind? Simply that they had come to the earth in what we refer to as a UFO from another level above humans, incarnated as humans, and awoken in order to demonstrate death overcome as Jesus did 2,000 years ago. One might say, like a repeat performance, except this time by a man and a woman, to restate the truth Jesus bore, restoring it to its accurate meaning, and once again show that an individual who seeks that level or kingdom will find it through the same process. At the end of our conversation, I was given a simple sequence code to use if I ever needed to get in touch with the two. At the, as I told NBC Dateline in Burbank on March 28, 1997, I walked the two out to the street, said goodbye, turned around, took a few steps, turned back around, and the two were gone. To this day, I cannot un explain where they went or how they did it. It was not until almost 15 months later that public meetings were held by the two, first in California and then in Oregon. As a result of these meetings, a great deal of media coverage was generated. Newspapers and magazines across the United States bannered headlines. However, the general public for its interest was giving misleading or false information as only a handful of individuals understood its meaning. At this point, 15 months later, I decided to use the telepic code for the first time that I was given. To my surprise, the following day, I received a telephone call and later a visit from one of the followers of the two. He related that he had been directed to contact me by the two as now, n now I ask for the truth. Again to this day, I cannot explain how this happened. We were thousands of miles apart. Several weeks later, the two reappeared in Oklahoma City, and we were once again talking. It wasn't until some times later that I realized the full meaning of what was written in the book Predictions for 1974. It said, Watch for startling announcements from Hayden C. Hughes, international UFO expert who will be in the headlines. If I had spoken up then when the two asked me to, and not have waited until I did, the headlines would be startling then and now not 23 years later. After the Oklahoma City meeting, I arranged an interview with the two and the National Enquirer in Fort Smith. The meeting was held in early December, however, the story was killed and never appeared. It is interesting to note that the night prior to the interview with the two and several followers, they requested a free night's lodging from an innkeeper in Fort Smith. His reply in granting permission was simple. If you are not who you say you are, then it's on your conscience. However, if you are who you say you are, then it's on my conscience. Following the interview, the re two returned to Oklahoma City. During the following five weeks, information was supplied by the two for the teachings of the two, 
which was published six months later as UFO Missionaries Extraordinary. Once again, another interview was set up, again in Fort Smith, this time with the New York Times Magazine. The article appeared in the February 29, 1975 issue. It was this article the media picked up on with Heaven's Gate in late March 1997. Five years before I was contacted by the two, the International UFO Bureau published the results of a study of the most commonly reported UFO occupants. The occupants were illustrated by the noted UFO artist Hal Crawford in 1969 and appeared in The Aliens 1970. The following year, the illustrations were published in the January 24, 1971 issue of the National Enquirer. I could not understand why this man looked so familiar to me. What was it that made me feel that I knew him? By chance, I had a photo of Herf on my desk at the same time the illustration of the second most commonly reported occupant was. Is this a cosmic coincidence? The two are almost identical. After investigating UFOs for 40 years, 1997 is the 50th anniversary of modern-day UFO reports. UFOs, perhaps they spoke the truth, or was it simply the greatest con? Were these two prophets or merely imposters? One thing is for sure, they turned out to be UFO missionaries extraordinary.